not merely seeing reality, it is touching the truth. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Chronic Gamer. My name is Matt and this is my final thoughts and redirect for Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works episodes 13, 14, and 15. So go ahead, click the link in the description, check that out, come back here, let me know what you think in the comments. If you are watching this on YouTube and you want to see next week's reaction video, check out my Patreon. The link is also in the description. Okay, so, damn. They started off hard. Um, the beginning of this new season is crazy. Just what I've come to expect from this uh, series. Um, basically, Reen and Archer in episode 13 go to confront Caster at the church. And Archer switches sides. Um, I don't know if this is a play or if he's actually switching sides. But um, my prediction, and I could be wrong is that Archer has some sort of plan, and that's why he decided to jump ship and go over to Castor's side. Um, they revealed that she is Medea from Greek mythology. I don't know really who that is, but um, yeah, like I said in the reaction, you need to know like a lot of history and mythology in order to fully understand these stories, and I unfortunately don't know them all, and I don't care to learn them all. If you want to let me know, you can let me know in the comments section, but I'm not going to waste my time trying to look everything up as far as the history and the mythology go. Um, but yeah, basically he turn coded and went over to Castor's side and Castor was able to steal Reen's command seals the same way that he stole Shiro's. And she was about to, um, I think she was about to attack Reen and uh, Shiro showed up and basically stopped stop them from attacking. I think it was actually, um, it was her master that was going to attack Reen, that, that teacher guy. I forget his name right now. But uh, he, he jumps in and he stops that. And uh, Castor lets, uh, Archer, I should say, ask Castor to let them go. So um, that's another reason why I think that he might not be completely on her side. But uh, he did say it's just because he doesn't want to fully betray his old master. But I don't know. I don't know what his motives are. But um, they could be completely selfish and he could be really jumping ship. I don't, I don't have any idea. But uh, that shit was crazy. Um, so in episode 14, they decide let's go meet with um, Elias Veal because she might be able to help them defeat Castor and get their servants back and maybe they can team up but um, they both are they both want to continue fighting in the war but they both are pretty much out of the war as their command seals were stolen so um, they think it's a good idea to go meet with Elias Veal but on their way over there like Castor or not Castor uh, Gilgamesh and Shinji show up um, I guess just to defeat them. Um, I'm not sure what their plan was, but they just showed up out of nowhere and totally started like killing everybody. They killed the two maids, the like homunculus maids that Elias Veal has, and then they showed like they just showed them like starting to fight Berserker and all them. Like Elias Veal came out with Berserker and. Berserker and Gilgamesh started fighting. Um, we got some cool backstory on Castor, how she showed up in the Holy Grail War. I guess she was summoned by some other dude, but like she had more mana than this guy, so the guy didn't trust her. And uh, he tried to kill her or make her kill herself, but because of her noble phantasm, she was able to negate the command seal. Um, I forget what they call her Noble Phantasm, but it's like, oh, it's called it's called the Rule Breaker. And basically, she can, like, negate things, like commands and, and whatnot. So, um, very interesting. Um, but uh, the fight between Gilgamesh and Hercules uh, Berserker was fucking intense, like... I guess he had to kill him 12 times because of Hercules' 12 labors. And I do know a little bit about the Hercules mythology, how he had to do 
certain things in order to be accepted as a god again. He was like a god, and uh, I guess they call him a demigod, but I don't, I don't know exactly what that means. But like, um, he had to perform like twelve heroic acts or whatever. I'm not sure labor, whatever you whatever you'd call them, but that they would let him back into. Um, what, would you, what do you call that? Uh, I forget what they call that in, uh, in I think it's Greek mythology, um, where Hercules and all of them live. I forget what it's called, but um, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, like, uh, they started fighting, and I totally didn't see it coming, but Gilgamesh killed Hercules and Eliasville. Ah. Uh, like, I, I didn't see that coming one bit. Like, he used his noble phantasm to kill him 12 times, and then at the end, he slashed and cut up Iliasville, and she ended up, like, bleeding to death. Um, but uh, that was fucking intense. Shiro is upset about it because Shiro doesn't believe that uh, you should have to kill people in this war. He believes that it should just be the servants who fight and that the people should survive because... We know his ideals are pretty close to Karitsugu's. He wants to be a hero and save people and, and protect people. So, um, yeah, these episodes are crazy and intense way to start off the new season. Now that Elias feels out, which I honestly didn't see it coming, but she's out of the running now, it seems. I don't see how she could be coming back anyway because she pretty much bled to death and we're absolutely positive that berserker was killed because he did that like voldemort fade away thing so um yeah great episodes great animation great artwork as always like the animation in this series is top notch i said it was excellent and i think it's beyond excellent um but that's pretty much it like now we're just left with the aftermath. What are reen and shiro gonna do now that they can't partner with elias feel and now that they don't have any command seals, will Shiro work on his magecraft? Maybe he will find, like, I, like I said, I was predicting that maybe he'll find like hidden talents that maybe Karitsugu passed down to him. They did mention that he had a pendant of some kind, which was similar to Reen's pendant. I don't know if that might have anything to do with it. Maybe. Maybe he'll pick up Magecraft through it. I don't know. Like, this whole series, I'm not going to lie. It is a very confusing series, and it's one that I think needs to be watched multiple times to understand. But I'm, I'm trying to do my best with, with what I got. But, um, yeah, that's my prediction, is somehow Shiro is going to become way more talented as a mage in this next season here, in this current um, part two, if you will. Um, somehow, some way, he's gonna. I think he's going to inherit more of Magecraft that Kuritsugu may have passed down to him some way. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I got for for these episodes. They were crazy intense, full of action, and um, really enjoyable. So let me know what you think in the comment section, and if you haven't already, like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Chronic Gamer. Peace.